Hi there. In this video, we are going to learn about the different encryption options provided by S3. This is mostly going to be a theoretical lecture. First, why is encryption even needed? In today's world, lots and lots of information gets generated, stored in terms of data and transferred from different sources to multiple destinations. More often than not, the data is uber sensitive and it is extremely important to secure the data at every step of this data storage and transfer. S3 is no different and hence it treats the data storage and access security with very high importance. Hence, S3 offers different options to encrypt the data that is in transit and at rest. In transit means that the data that is either coming into the S3 for storage or getting retrieved from it. At rest means while the data is stored on the disks at the data center. On the higher level, S3 offers two types of encryption, server side encryption and client side encryption. Let's look at them in detail. As the name suggests, the encryption as well as the decryption is handled by the server. That is, when you upload the object, S3 encrypts the data before it writes to the disk. And when you access the object, S3 decrypts for you. When you access the object, you will not see any difference in accessing encrypted or decrypted object. As long as you are an authenticated user and have the access to S3 object, you do not have to do anything extra. Only one server side encryption option per object is allowed. That is, you cannot apply different types of server side encryption to the same object simultaneously. It uses 256 bit advanced encryption standard that is AES 256 for encrypting the data. When you opt to use server side encryption or SSE, you have three options to choose from depending on how the encryption keys should be managed. In other words, the three options that you will come across in a bit only differ in how the encryption keys are managed. By the way, I assume that you know what encryption and decryption keys are. For those who do not, encryption keys are the keys that are used to encrypt some information or data and decryption keys are the ones that decrypts that information. Let's take a look at the first encryption option. Server side encryption with Amazon S3 managed keys or SSE S3. As the name suggests, Creating and managing the encryption keys is done by S3. So how does it work? Basically, when a user uploads an object, S3 encrypts the data with a unique key, which is the encryption key. And as an additional security, it encrypts the key itself with another key that is called as a master key. And then S3 keeps on rotating the master key for further security. The encrypted object is then stored on the disks. While retrieving the object, S3 does the decryption for you and returns you the original object. The second option is server side encryption with AWS key management service managed keys. In this, creating and managing of the encryption keys is done by AWS key management service, which is a dedicated service that deals with managing encryption keys. It is very similar to S3. That is when a user uploads the object, it first encrypts the data using an encryption key and then for additional security encrypts the key itself using another key. Here it is called as an envelope key. The encrypted object is then stored on the disk. While retrieving the object, S3 does the decryption for you and returns you the original object. So it looks like the option of server side encryption with key management service is very similar to that of server side encryption with S3. Now let us see how SSE KMS is different than SSE S3. First, this option allows you to have separate permissions for the use of envelope key. It also provides you with an audit trail of when your key was used and by whom. Additionally, it also allows you to create and manage the encryption key by yourself if you wish so, or just use the default key that is provided by the key management service. So it gives you more flexibility compared to the first option and you can be more in control of the encryption if you wish so. The third option is server side encryption with customer provided key. In this option, customer doesn't need to maintain any code to perform data encryption and decryption. 
The only thing customer does is managing of the encryption keys that they provide. Also note that S3 does not store any encryption keys. The customer is responsible for tracking which encryption key they provided for which object. So the customer is solely in control of creating and managing the keys. This option may be suitable for users that have custom encryption standards or who have their own key management systems. Because the customer manages the encryption keys on the client side, they have to manage any additional safeguards such as key rotation on the client side. Finally, to retrieve an object, the customer must provide the same encryption key. And this is a very important point regarding this particular option of encryption. Let us see how this works. First, user uploads an object to the bucket. S3 then encrypts the data or the object using the encryption key that is provided by the user. The encrypted object is stored on the disk. And while retrieving, S3 uses the same encryption key that was provided by the customer to decrypt the object and returns the original object back to the customer. In all of the previous options, we saw that it was the S3 server that was in charge of managing the encryption and decryption. In this option, it is the customer who will be more in control of managing the encryption and decryption. So in client side encryption, the onus of the encryption is on the user, not on the server. That is, the objects get encrypted before it even comes to S3. There are two options available if you choose the client side encryption. First is to use an AWS key management service managed customer master key. In this, you use the master key that is managed by the AWS KMS. Note that master key encrypts the encryption key, which in this case is managed by the customer. Let us quickly see how this works. For uploading the data, the client first requests key management service for the master key. The key management service returns two versions of the key, which is randomly generated, plain text version and a cipher blob. The client uses the plain text version for encrypting the data and stores that data on the bucket. It also uploads the cipher blob to the bucket as the object metadata. As a result, the encrypted data and the metadata is getting stored on the S3 bucket or disks. When the user tries to download the data, the client downloads the encrypted object and the cipher blob, which is nothing but the metadata. The client then sends this cipher blob to key management service and retrieves the plain version of the key from the key management service. Using this key, it finally decrypts the object data. I know this is a complicated process to understand, but if you look at it carefully, all it basically tells you is that the user is in charge of managing the encryption key, which encrypts the data. But it is the key management service who is at the helm of providing the master key, which encrypts the encryption key itself. The second option for the client side encryption is to use a client side master key. In this case, it is the customer who is in charge of managing the encryption keys. If the keys are lost, the customer will not be able to decrypt the data. Let us see how it works. For uploading, the customer first provides the master key to Amazon S3 encryption client. The S3 encryption client first generates the encryption key and then encrypts that key itself with the customer provided master key. It encrypts the data and saves the material description as the part of the object's metadata. The client then uploads the encrypted data and the encrypted key as the object metadata to S3. While downloading, once the customer requests the object, Amazon S3 encryption client downloads the encrypted object from S3 and using the client provided master key, it decrypts the encryption key and then decrypts the data using that encryption or the data key. In this video, we learn about how S3 manages the encryption and decryption of the objects. It provides the user with two high level options, the server side encryption and client side encryption. In server side encryption, it is the S3 server that is in charge of the encryption as well as decryption. Whereas in client side encryption, it is the customer who is in charge of the encryption and decryption.
In server-side encryption, remember that there are three further options provided. First, server-side encryption with S3, in which it is the S3 server that manages the data encryption key and the master key itself. Master key, remember, basically encrypts the data encryption key for added security. The second option is server-side encryption with key management service, in which creating and managing the data encryption key and master key is key management services responsibility. However, it provides you more flexibility and auditing options, which makes it more expensive solution. The third option is server-side encryption with customer managed keys in which S3 manages the keys that are provided by the user or customer. The client-side encryption provides two main options. One is key management service managed customer master key and client-side encryption using client-side master key. Remember that in client-side encryption, it is extremely important that utmost care is taken while managing the keys because AWS is least involved in the management and security of the keys. Client-side encryption is more used in scenarios where customer has some solid key management system or where it is a matter of high confidentiality where the keys are not allowed to be managed by other than the client themselves. I know this video covered many different encryption options and it is difficult to remember all of them. So I suggest you watch this video one or two times more. And for the exam, just remember the specialty of each option. Thank you for watching this video.